This has been so informative and so interesting. I'm interested in, in action, and I, I think you've said and others have said we have sort of a window of time, a window of opportunity with uh, uh, a particularly favorable Senate and a president who shares basically our concept of the way the world is. How do we avoid, as Christians, getting enmeshed in what would be called reactionary republicanism or liberal democratic programs and missing what God has? Is there an alternate, a, a different way from either of these two? Yes, we have to understand what the enemy is. The enemy is this other view of reality, that reality, final reality, is only material or energy shaped by pure chance. Mm -hmm. Now then, uh, and humanism coming built on that, uh, that man is the center of all things. Now what we must fix in our mind as Christians, if we're going to get anywhere in all this, is that a conservative humanism mm -hmm. is no better than a liberal humanism. <laughs> And we've just got to get down, down there and not vote by labels. Now, when we come to this, we must then say, indeed, through the conservative swing of the last election, mm -hmm. the 1980 election in the United States, uh, that we do have an open door that we haven't had for some years. But we also must say we must see results from that. Mm -hmm. We mustn't just settle for mere words. And with all economic pressure indeed on uh, this administration and there must be an improvement in the economy and the defense and we must stand against the imperialistic Russian thrust yet nevertheless if these issues such as abortion are not dealt with uh, and we just let words 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 come forth instead of action the whole battle is going to be lost you kind of go back a few years ago when the Christian uh, consensus pretty much governed this nation. How did we lose it? What has been wrong with evangelicals even up to the present day that keeps them from getting involved in, in, in any kind of thing like this? I think a false view of spirituality, mm -hmm. uh, a platonic view of spirituality which follows Plato, the philosopher Plato, Greek philosopher, but certainly isn't biblical. Mm -hmm. And that is that spirituality is shut up to a small area of life. Uh, or you can say that the soul is important, the body isn't important, would be a, a quick fix on the thing. Well, we, what we must realize uh, that in this view, in this view, everything is worldly uh, that isn't in this little box of spirituality. Mm -hmm. Now, as I look at the Bible, this is exactly 1,000% backwards. There are certain sinful things that the, God tells us are sinful, and we ought to take those and set them aside. And then we must acknowledge we're sinners too. None of us are perfect. But nevertheless, we should set them aside. Mm -hmm. And then everything else is spiritual. Well, elaborate on that. Everything then in the world, because you're saying that Jesus has a plan and a worldview and a purpose. He's not just God of the church. He's God of everything. Absolutely. He made it. Yeah. And one day, uh, the wonder is, Jesus is coming back, and there's going to be the redemption of all things, as Peter said immediately after Jesus' ascension. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be raised from the dead. Paul emphasizes that in 1 Corinthians 15. If we're not going to be raised from the dead, uh, Christianity is a total failure. Uh, it means nothing. Uh, God is interested in the totality of life, art, music, literature, but also the political life. So true spirituality means the lordship of Christ in the totality of life and not just a small part of it. The liberal press particularly would try to keep conservative Christians, if you will, or evangelicals out of political life and there's this great pressure to make fun of you when you get, quote, in politics and they, they, want to, they, they don't think it should be and there are many Christians who, who say yes to the same thing. Now what do you say to them? Well, they're wrong. Okay. <laughs> that's that's simple. So but what Christians should should do what? Run for office, vote, register, get involved. What ought they to do? Well, we ought to realize that in the a viewpoint of the Scripture, uh, life is not divided up into watertight compartments. Uh, that all of life should be lived for the Lordship of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, what exact uh, portion each one of us should have? Uh, is according to the Lord's leading for us. So we cannot lay down rules for, for people. They must look to the Lord directly to know. But the principle to lay down, uh, yes, the rule to lay down, is that Christians have a responsibility for the society in which they live. We're to be the salt. We're to be the light. And I would say this with absolute firmness. We are not in the mess we're in in this country and throughout the world.
uh, especially think of the Reformation countries, and spe uh, specifically the United States, we're not in the mess we're in because of a humanist conspiracy. I think there is a humanist conspiracy. Mm -hmm. That's not the reason we're in trouble. The reason we're in trouble is the church has not really followed out the concept of the Lordship of Christ and the totality of life in these last 80, 40 years. And that being so, by our silence, by refusing to be what God tells us to be, the light of this culture, uh, and so on, uh, the salt of the culture, we are the ones responsible before God for the mess we're in. Well, now, in past revivals, Wesley, for example, or maybe the uh, move in the 1850s with uh, Moody and Finney and these great men, did that result in some kind of social action? I sometimes wonder if our evangelical leadership uh, remembers our heritage. Mm -hmm. uh, it is true that the Great Awakening prior to the uh, founding of America, the Wesley Revival, the Whitfield Revival, the re Great Revivals in Scandinavia, they called for the salvation of individual souls, and thousands were saved. We should be mm -hmm. so thankful. But there wasn't a single one of those that did not result in social consciousness and social action. And the Wall Street Journal, as I quote in the Christian Manifesto, uh, pointed out that it was the Great Awakening uh, in America, that revival that led to the preparation for the founding of this country. Now that's what we've forgotten. And our institutions all, in a sense, flow out of revival, and we must be in a salted light to, keep, to, to preserve them, to keep them going. If we don't, we, we fail them. That's right, and as Christians, we it, need constant revival, of course, and the church needs constant revival. Uh, but I would always uh, say, here's Reformation and revival. They should never be put contrary to each other. Reformation is the restoration of pure doctrine. It should always lead to the restoration of the individual Christian's life and revival. Uh, but it flows the other way Re so-called revival and all kinds of talk about the work of the holy spirit mm -hmm. that does not lead to the lordship of christ and the totality of life including social action mm -hmm. something's wrong along the way professor rice said that it's war between the christians and the humanists but he said i think we're going to win you want to give your prognosis of how it'll come out you know, people always say to me you're an optimist or a pessimist and I'm an optimist in the sense that I believe in the United States we have the greatest opportunity in the world, maybe the only opportunity at this moment, to turn it around. In that sense, I'm an optimist. If you ask me, though, whether we're going to, it depends upon the Christians whether they're really to pay the price in their own professions, mm -hmm. whether the way to pay the price for Christ, to stand on the cutting edge, it means the nurse being fired because she refuses to let the little baby starve to death that the doctor says should starve to death in a fantasize. Mm -hmm. It means the lawyer. Uh, he, he shouldn't be a Christian lawyer just by putting the Moody Monthly or something on his reading table or the Christian magazines instead of secular ones. He ought to be out there fighting these First Amendment cases, mm -hmm. fighting for freedom in, for the, so that the uh, humanist state doesn't reach down into the Christian schools uh, with uh, an, a uh, forcing... Uh, a twist to the Christian curriculum, uh, so molding it again to their humanist views. He ought to be in there fighting in all these areas. Uh, the doctor ought to be willing uh, not to have that position as an obstetrician, a gynecologist in one of the great hospitals, if, uh, if he refuses to uh, uh, perform abortions. You ought to pay the price for it. And most of all, maybe the pastors better get busy and pay the price of being willing to upset their people who sit there in the pew Sunday after Sunday and they love the music and they love to say, isn't it wonderful? Yeah. And all the time they're going through this whole thing, they move out after Sunday and do nothing into the culture that costs them anything.